Friendy, talk to me about uh, the different culture at the club in terms of the Island boys, uh, the, the guys that would just have fun uh, on the field and off the field as well. Yeah, well, it's, uh, I mean, we, we experienced everything, my family. Um, we went to the Marae, you know, we just we thought, how good is this? You know, we had Matty Ruhr actually was, you know, in charge of us, uh, an ex-player. Um, you know, when we went there and kind of got a feel of the tradition, uh, when we're over there and as you said we're in the sheds and you just got characters all around you uh, it's 24 7 they're just talking Samoan t- talking Mary you know just comes in and out their slang uh, you got Simon Cutter uh, what do we got Dave Fusatua um, he was he said he was religious, but some of the things he uh, he come out with, I wouldn't say <laughs> <laughs> he was too religious. But uh, just to listen to the boys, and then Jimmy and Maloney would walk in, and yeah, the the island boys would just pull him apart. It was fantastic, a bit who, of slangy match. Who was more of a pest, Jimmy and Maloney, or, or or name and shame? Well, not shame, but uh, call out some of these uh, warrior boys. Well, well, Conrad Harrell, you know what you see is what you get with Connie. Uh, he's twenty four seven. He's always trying to pull someone's pants down or do do whatever and then you know Simon Cutter was was you know right behind him old Solly um yeah obviously by Tongans and, and they had the, the lousy boys uh quiet on the outside but when you get them in the sheds uh used to pull people apart we had Sammy Tonkins there for a few years you know he was uh he used to spice it up a bit he thought he had a little bit of color in him he was a, a white <laughs> pommy um but uh we had Jakey Lulliman uh you could have well he's he's back over there isn't he you know you could have swore he was an islander but um yeah he was he was a great man to be around and then you had Simon Mannering that he would just sit in the corner and just have a chuckle had to keep your eyes open 24 7 around these boys and you know I wasn't because I was the Aussie I wasn't pushed aside and I was a part of their jokes and it was it was great to be yeah, it was it was a good mix, Mont. Uh, uh, really enjoyed it. You know, footy side of things was great. Who yeah. was the the shearer, so to speak? Who would be the guy that made sure that everyone was was in line? Well, you had a few of the Kiwi seniors. You know, Simon Mannering, hence why he was the captain. You know, he he didn't talk much, but when he did, you know, the boys listened. It was fantastic. Tommy was good. Like, um, you know, he's hard nosed, Tommy, and you know, he's a hundred miles an hour, and he just wanted the best for the team. Now he he was certainly a leader. Uh, he didn't have a seat by beside his name, but uh, yeah, he was unbelievable. You knew if uh, if you're in a battle, you know you want the big man or the, the little man beside you. Like when Jimmy was there, you know he used to you know, put shit on people, but he'd train hard and it, there'd be no hiding. Um, so he was always good to be around as well. Uh, that aspect, Jimmy. Like 2011, it, it started to click, and I don't know if that's because Jimmy Maloney was there. I don't want to put him forward because he's a he's a pest but uh you know he was a he was a competitor and you know everyone loved him uh ron hoffman uh you mentioned leaders uh that's a leader on the field you, you have a laugh why do you laugh when i say ron hoffman because <clears throat> he's he's a different individual ron hoffman um love the guy a bit but he's very intense when it comes to footy and uh he's very different you know i think he sits and just does Lego pieces for fun, you know, when his spare time and that. Well, nothing against Lego, but he's just, you know, he can recite movies and, you know, God love him. But, yeah, he's he, he's certainly a competitor and, you know, what he's, what he did in our sport was, was unbelievable. Um, you know, he, he took it, he ran hard lines. Uh, probably hurt him in the end because he took that many shots yeah. to the melon. Um, but, yeah, he was good to have over in New Zealand. Um, just... Unfortunately, we we just didn't have the troops around him to yeah mm. get him to where we needed to be. You mentioned Maloney. Um, he's gone on to win a couple of premierships. But, you know, Chad Townsend, who got another chance to put on the colours not so long ago or, or, or last year, what about him? Did you ever think that he was going to be a, a grand final winner? Well, it's amazing. Mike. You know, he, he got his opportunity to come over to New Zealand to, to play first grade. Um, so... And, uh, you know, Chad, well, he was my training partner. And, you know, in the gym and uh, on the track, you know, he was always right beside me. And he's much like myself, you know, probably not one of the 
skilled, most skilled individuals, but, you know, he's a, he's a bit of a Cooper Cronk mold where, you know, he gives direction. He's, he's, he's very good uh, at, at steering the ship and, you know, it's good to see that he had the, the right boys around him at, at the Sharks and, you know, I retired in 16 and I was actually in Sydney when, when the Sharks won, so I caught up with him and you know, gave him a big cuddle, mate, and told him that, you know, I deserve half of that. <laughs> what you do, mate? 